I'm gonna get paid today. Hey. I got a million ways. Go ahead. Niggas is lolly gagging. Um, I ain't got any shirt to fuck with the <laughs> it ain't it ain't no secret. Don't don't I mean shit I'm I win and I lose, but I definitely win way more than I lose. Especially when it comes to the money. You gotta have and then you gotta have the back You gotta have the back so shit Yeah, but then you might you know, it might be kinda like if basketball for like now, like you know how Niggas did all these trades and shit. So certain niggas that might have been playing more, getting certain stats, now they ain't getting it. Or now shit, niggas shit is, you know, they trying to get chemistry and all that. You don't know what it is gonna be. So that shit can throw you off. Make sure I got my audio crib. Make sure my audio good. Check check. We are live here at the penthouse. Check check. If you come in here, share this motherfucking live. Episode 20, we got my dog in the building too. We're gonna get into all that fun stuff, man. Friday night in the city, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely Friday night in the city, man. Live here at the penthouse, episode 20. I'm your host, Bangy. And we about to get into it, man. That's all I can say. JC, what up, man? What's going on with my dog, Bang Bang? It's your world, man. It's your world. We got to get this mic closer to you. Let me. You can hold it. Let me see. Let me back to this. Yeah. Because I can see JC going to be on his cool shit today. Oh, yeah. I'm laid back. You know me. I'm. That's me. <laughs> yes, sir. Critty, we good with the audio? I'm feeling good today, man. I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling good today. How y'all feeling? Who in the motherfucking building? State your name. What side of town you represent from? Talk to me. Other than the weather, everything peachy and creamy. Other than the weather, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we figured we should be used to this shit in the city by now, though. Yeah, but you know most people, they, they born and raised here, but they still talk about the weather and, and let it destroy their whole mood. <laughs> nah, for real. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't gonna cap. I'm one of them people. I, I might do that too sometimes, from time to time. I'd be like, "Fuck that! It's raining." All right, I'm taking my kids to uh, get air to bounce. I'm, we going to the movies. Something, something to get out the crib. Just something to do. Like just literally anything, right? Mm hmm. This is what you make of it, buddy. Where you, where you coming from? Oh, you, you said you was getting your shit, Valet. You said I'm gonna pull up when I get done out from Valet. So. You coming from somewhere fancy, you fancy ass nigga. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you I fancy ain't, ass nigga. I ain't, too, I ain't too fancy. I'm glad you came through though, man. It's, we've been trying to uh, get this interview set up for a minute. And um, I would see my dog out and about. Like, I need you to come to the pen. I need to get this interview with you, man. And my dog always say, yeah, no problem. But my dog is one of the... One of the most hands-on fathers I know, and I know my dog a busy man. And like I said, I'm just grateful you pulled up on your dog, for real, man. Oh, for sure. I was saying the same thing to myself uh, earlier. Like, we was being supposed to do this about three, four, five months ago. I know time be kind of be going by fast. Time, that's what I was just telling Critty. What I just tell you, Critty, I said, time don't wait on no man. And... That's why I'm I'm moving on. I'm moving this this year, man. I'm I'm moving on things. I even you feel me. I'm I'm just pressing the issue because I I'm understanding that tomorrow ain't promised and time don't wait on nobody. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like you a legend in this motherfucker. I feel like it was only right that I get you to pull up. You know, tell us a little bit of your story and, and tell us how you manifested this life, man. That not too many have manifested for themselves, man. So. Hopefully, like I said, we could drop some game on the youngins. We can get the youngins right, and we can get a people a little bit more of an insight about who Jeff Cumberland is. For sure, for sure. So we're going to start here. For those who don't know, who may have been slept under a rock, introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Jeff Cumberland. From Columbus, Ohio, Southside, Columbus, Ohio. One of 
went to Columbus Brookhaven High School. They shut us down. Um, we had a state championship. He, he touching on everything I want to touch on. He just answering <laughs> shit. Just, he just so, talking I'm to you. I'm going to introduce myself for people it's, who don't know. They might not know. It's all good. It's Everybody all don't good. know. Because we was going to touch on this stuff, so it's all good either way. But episode 20, Penthouse Podcast. I'm your host, Bangy. And like he said, my dog, Jeff Cumberland, is in the motherfucking building, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. So for the people who don't know, let's start here. Who is Jeff Cumberland? For the people that don't know, um, it's it's kind of simple, but it's hard. But at the end of the day, who is Jeff Cumberland right now? Is I I, don't, I always looked at myself as like a normal person. I know I ain't average, but I always looked at myself as a normal person. But the person who I am, I'm a I'm a dad, a son, a friend, a father, a fiance. A, I, I got a whole congratulations bunch of, by the way congratulations again I, I, I know I already it. told you but again I got a whole bunch of different titles so who is Jeff Cumberland is you know I'm a chef I'm a, a a dad a whole bunch of I got my dog right here with me too I'm a dog dad shout out, so shout out the dog too. what's your dog's name again scrumptious shout out scrumptious in the building <laughs> man JC brought scrumptious to the penthouse is love you know everybody is welcome to the pen. You know, Scrumptious is a real player over there, just oh, chilling, yeah. and we locked in. Scrumptious ain't said a word. <laughs> <laughs> Scrumptious is comfortable. Scrumptious is chilling, man. So, where are you? Where are you from originally? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Okay, and what side of town? South side of Columbus, Ohio. All right. So for those who don't know, my dog is from the south side of Columbus, Ohio. And just give us a little bit of like what your background was like growing up in the south side of Columbus, Ohio. Oh my God. Well, it was, I got two bro- two younger brothers. Um, I'm the oldest. Um, it was pretty rough. I'm mean, just like any, you know, kid from the urban area. You know, we all got stories um, and things that happen in our lives. But for me, you know, as far as any friends I had, I had it worse than any of my friends. And... I don't got no friends that was raised in the suburbs or none of that. They, you know, they right there where I'm at. A, a lot of people don't know, but we actually went to school together for a few years, high school, Brookhaven. And a lot of the people I see around you now is the same people that's been around you back then. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm one of them type of people. I, I stick to what I know. I, I don't go out looking for new friends or even f- foods and in, in restaurants and when i go to a restaurant uh, i order the same food i ain't trying nothing different you know i stick to what i know that's the way you don't gotta what's your what's what's one of your or a few if you don't have one what's your favorite uh restaurant to eat out here in the city um i like roof chris roof which, chris. which that's typical that's that's <laughs> typical that's 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 typical but you know I'd rather cook my own self to, to keep it all the way real. I see rather than be, going to a restaurant, I, I'd rather cook. I see you be in the kitchen whipping it up on your uh, Jeff Boy RD shit. What's oh, your yeah, definitely? What's your um? Tell me this: when the, when you when you whip it up, you always posting these good ass meals on the gram. When you whip it up, when the family requests you to cook, what's that meal that they like? That can you cook that or babe? Can you cook that? It ain't never really a re- uh, request. It's, it's just it's whenever you're feeling. Yeah, for the most part, that's literally how it is. It ain't never like, oh yeah, can you cook this? You know, this is my favorite. It is just like, no, I know certain foods that they really like, like lamb chops and you know stuff like that. Uh, chicken, obviously, every kid like chicken. My kids they choose chicken, nice. they choose to eat chicken nuggets over over anything. And where did you? Where would you say you picked your cooking up from? Uh, my my grandmother b- back in the day. I used to be uh, cook like meals, meals like when I was like ten, eleven years old, like literally cook meals. Now, obviously, I wasn't always good, and I done burnt some shit up and and all that different shit. But yeah, I learned from my from my grandma. Okay, um, I love the fact that you're a family man. You take great pride in your family. Like I said, you you got the same friends around you that's been around you for a while now. Um, have you always? First off, how many kids do you have? I have four. Okay, and did you always want a big family? Did you always, was that something that was always in your plans? I always said, uh, 
at least two and no more than six no more so, than six so so it's possible that you gonna have some more possibly oh definitely i definitely definitely i got three girls one boy i definitely want to want another boy if i can i mean even if i get another another daughter shit, I, I'm, I'm blessed with beautiful princesses gonna grow into queens so i love it man i love it you you real hands on as a father like the real way oh yeah no doubt my one like one of my daughters live with me the three of my other kids don't uh live with me but they see me every day uh, i'm about to Literally, say you would they, think they no, live with you as they, much as you i mean you post no. them and you got them with you yeah they live literally, <laughs> literally three 365 out of a year and i talked to talked about this to my kids they see me 315 that's, that's no cap that's that's good shit man that's good shit 315 i get them from school every day literally and my i live 45 minutes away from a school i go get them from school every day though just so they know they see my face whenever which i'm glad that i'm i'm in that position for as being able to you know see them whenever i want because i know everybody ain't got that luxury where they can go get their kids yeah. or see their kids all the time and me since i got that luxury i'm, I'm taking that shit in because it is some people who got that luxury of getting their kids whenever they don't even, they'll never get them Facts. so she my kids gonna know one thing if you could ask them shit, they, they're gonna tell you they're gonna tell they're you gonna about tell you everything they're gonna what? tell you about pops you they gonna argue to till i die know. If I'm the best dad in the world or not, I ain't even gotta say nothing. They they gonna speak for me. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. I always wanted twins. I was gonna pay for them at one point in time. I was gonna pay them to go. How do you do that? They got doctors. You gotta go out of town. It's like ten bands. I was gonna pay that little ten bands. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna pay that. But pay for twins. That's that's. I ain't gonna lie. It's the first time I ever heard that you could do that though. Yeah, but it's not like ninety nine percent guaranteed that they both gonna be boys or they both gonna be girls now they gonna be twins and one could be a boy and one could be a girl so it ain't if you want or oh, i want both girls or i want both boys like it ain't guaranteed that you're gonna get that okay let's take it back a little bit man to the to the haven days man the legendary haven days man you 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 actually transferred to the haven correct no nah, nah, i ain't never transferred you, so you was there all four years yeah, I got I got recruited though. <laughs> For real, I got recruited, bro. I went to South I went to sophomore. I was bad as hell. That I remember I was on house arrest. And, bad as fuck. In in middle school, I was in, I was on house you arrest. You was torturing shit in high school, Jay. You came you came so far like I am proud of the man that you grew into cuz you was torturing shit in high school. No, nah, not always been like a, a a fighter, but I never really been like a a bully. I've been like the bully to bully well you know i used, to, outside, I used to play too much though like as any little teenager you know but i'm big as hell you six five and they like five five in the ninth grade of course like, you're gonna bully <laughs> you from the south side of columbus though you gotta have some tough skin oh yeah you know coming from there anyway and when you the when you the oldest child shit, you you forced to have to step up you forced to have to be a leader like it ain't it's 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 forced on you in high school you play football and basketball um, which one was your love, your first love? Which one did you love more? Basketball. Like, people who really know me. Like, I still play basketball to this day, though. But, like, bas basketball. Your ass used to be yamming on shit. But the thing is, like, in high school, like, I never, like, worked on my game at no sport. Like, when I went, when it was basketball practice, I went to basketball practice. It wasn't no after practice or no getting some extra shots in or getting some cone drills in. You pretty much just did what? Just to get the get by enough to get by type shit. Yeah, pretty much. Why you think that was though? Um, just I guess all the all the shit that I had going through coming up and then just just focusing on what I was doing at the moment. Shit, I was enjoying it. I was having fun. So to me, I'm just having fun doing it until you know a certain point rankings and all that start to come out. You then you start to see you know hopes and dreams start to get a little closer. That's that's crazy. Tell us this: if you didn't take the professional athlete route, what what is it that you think 
where do you think your life would have went or what is it that you think you would have chose to do professionally instead? Oh, I ain't going to even cap to you. Like, if I didn't, sports saved me. That saved me. That's kept let's, me. That let's kept talk me about off the. It. That let's kept me. Up, that kept me off the. Well, it didn't keep me off the block, but I wasn't on the block. You know, doing certain shit. I was out there with them, but I wasn't doing certain shit. And they used to be like, nah, he the one. It, you know, you, I'm allowed out there, but I ain't allowed to touch nothing. And ain't nobody allowed to touch me. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's crazy, and I think um, for for the youth especially, I think sports is currently saving a lot of the youth um, currently. So with it playing that big of a role in your life and, and helping you make that transition for the better, that's that's an amazing, amazing thing. That's an amazing thing to see the progress. Um, you're super into fashion. You, you you put this shit on. You be on the ground popping your shit, fresh pics. You got you, you, you got the drip, the whole designer model poses, you do all that the whole time. <laughs> Tell me, um, how long have you actually been in the fashion and what are some of your favorite fashion brands and designers? Uh, I've always been in the fashion, but growing up and not having much, it's only so much stuff you can you can do. You can have, but you know You gotta I make a shake, man. But you know, I used to have you got that flick. Yeah. But I used to have um uncles and shit. They used to leave their clothes and shit at my grandma's house. You know that's the, you know that's their mom and it, you know they got the fubu and all that shit. Yeah. What? And they was my size. I wore that shit to school and put it right back. But I was so clean and so neat, he wouldn't even know that I wore it. It wouldn't be no stain on it or nothing. So you wore that shit without him even knowing type shit. Yeah, but then once he knew, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, JC, you good? You can rock my shit because I know you gonna keep it clean. I respect it." So he, he, but that only lasted for like a little minute. I only used to do it like mid, literally middle school, high school. It wasn't middle school, but middle school, I was already, what, seventh grade? I was already six foot. That's crazy. Tell me this. To make the NFL is like, to make the NFL, any professional thing, NBA, to make it as a professional musician, artist, to make it to the professional level of anything is one of the hardest things there is to do in the world. And no matter what roads or obstacles it was, or no matter how you did it, you done that. And I first off wanna say salute, cause not too many have the opportunity and not too many cross that threshold mentally in life to make that happen because I know it takes a lot. Tell me what the preparation was like for you to actually make it to the NFL as far as as far as you crossing that line to get there. It's, it's more so discipline. That's the main thing, being disciplined in, in life, being disciplined on and off the field or court, whatever sport it may be. And you know, just being disciplined and, and following the right paths and doing the things that you need. You know, you might want to go out and, and have a drink with the fellas, but you might have early morning workouts or practice. So she, that discipline, nah, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay in the room and I'm going to get my sleep and boom, the other player who ain't disciplined, he like, shit, I can still wake up. <laughs> He's he still going out, he partying and shit. He do wake up, but shit, you can see it. Obviously, you can smell the alcohol from the pores. The coaches, they can smell it. They know it. And then you showing it, like, from your work. You got the beer muscle, so you think you looking good, but you you ain't lifting as much as you know you normally do. You you tired. You more tired from runs and different stuff like that. So it's just more so just being disciplined. Disciplined and aware. Facts. You did two years at Illinois, correct? Four years. Four, I'm sorry, four years at Illinois. What was the difference like from you transitioning from the high school ball and your normal routines and workouts to going actually going to Illinois and playing? Did you feel much of a difference? Yeah, because you got to hold yourself more accountable in college. Like high school is more so, you know, 
you at school, you got practice after school. You already there. Like, <laughs> you you already there. You already there. So, don't want to go to practice. But, you know, a lot of times you be lax a day ago or you ain't really practicing hard. Rather than college, that shit is like a, a strict schedule. And at first, like, when you first coming in, it's hard because you, you got – this school and then you got meetings and then you got lift and run and then you got the other football and you got to meet with counselors and these people and that people then you still That's got autographs and different That's stuff you lot. got and then you still got to make sure your books is is fully tight but you still excited because you a student but you an athlete at the same time so how do you feel how do you feel nil deals would have changed when when we was growing up in this school how do you feel that that would have changed our lives Oh, that's definitely big. We've been saying that for, obviously, even before I came and started playing, people been saying, you know, athletes should get paid. I mean, you see how much revenue they making off the athletes. You still ain't getting paid enough, even the pros. Like, the owners is billionaires. They getting buku money. You getting hurt, they don't want to give you no, give you no dollars. Shh. Crazy, dangerous sport too. Dangerous sport, fun sport, um, yeah, very dangerous. entertaining sport. We all love yeah. it, but we can't, we can't, we can't deny that it definitely is a dangerous sport and definitely worth every dollar that them boys out there making and, and playing for. Cause the way them boys be hitting out there and man, sh- I ain't gonna cap. Couldn't be me, man. You ever got your head rocked? In a uh, NFL game, just on some rock shit where you was like, damn, bro, rock me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I had to get out the game for for a little bit. See, that's right serious. Here, right here. I got hit. I got stitches. Right here. See, uh, it's serious, and I ain't even yeah. laughing because it's not nah, funny. Right but here. It's serious. Nah, shit, I ain't tripping. It's part of the game. Damn. Yep. He ring my bell. I ain't had no concussion or nothing. I came right. Uh, well, I had to get stitched up. I got stitched up. I came right back in the game. You know me, I'm head hunting. But shit, where that nigga? I'm about to crack his ass. I was trying so hard to crack that nigga, I couldn't even get to it. For <laughs> <laughs> everything I love. Like, Tell us nah, this. I'm cool. I ain't got no concussion. Let me get out there on the field. Just stitch me up. I'm cool. Watch what I do to him. <laughs> Tell us this. <coughs> and if you don't, if you don't, if it's too personal, you don't have to answer. We can skip it. What was your first? Big purchase after entering the NFL. Uh, see when I when I first entered, I was free agent, so it ain't like I was making big money. Shit, my first um, signing bonus was uh, two thousand, and after taxes, it was twelve hundred. So then, obviously, my um, my rookie year, I never was on a practice squad or nothing. So I was always on a 53-man roster. So I always made active, you know, always at least made 365000 That was the rookie minimum when I played. So, so I always made that, at mm-hmm. least. But I wasn't getting paid nothing crazy. But I would say my biggest purchase, once I did do something, it was only like 150000 I bought my grandma a house. That's crazy. That's amazing. Good shit. That's amazing. Tell me um, what you feel your worst investment was during your time in the NFL. Uh, shit. Some of the partying. Maybe some, shit, maybe a c- couple of the people who, who, who I was dipping out the money to. Mm. A lot of partying. You was, you was hitting them clubs. <laughs> oh, for sure. You know how it is when you're young. I, already know. I, I wasn't one of them kids that was, like, going to teen clubs. Like, I wasn't going out before my age. Like, I wasn't going to the clubs until I was old enough. Like, I wasn't one of them that was young trying to get in a nod. Nah, I wasn't doing that. That's one thing. Like, I was a fighter, and I was from the hood, and I hang out with the homies in the neighborhood. <laughs> but when they, you yeah. know, when they clicking up and going to the, the clubs just to fight, and they got new, cl- new clothes, new shoes on just to go fight, I was never with that. Like, yo... Um, no. Makes sense. Makes sense. Have you ever faced anybody, anybody in the NFL that you looked up to, and actually had to face go against them? Like when you finally made it there. I ain't gonna say uh, nobody that I really looked up to and I had to face. Or, especially or let's say, like let's let's say I mean you can you go by like um, you fucked with. 
like before I mean, you got there. Played against, I mean, Troy Polamalu playing against him when I played for the Jets with uh, against uh, the Steelers, and then I would say more so, like, you know, some couple of people I played with. But I one see of the you coolest, they was talking a bunch of shit when y'all was playing them. Antonio Gates, he one of the he he one of the coolest <laughs> coolest laid back dudes. Antonio Gates, mm-hmm. the legend, Charger legend for sure. He a good dude though, real good, humble. How, how how did you feel? What was your what was the feeling like when you scored your first NFL touchdown? Do you remember the feeling? Oh yeah, I remember. I remember it exactly. I, I remember every touchdown, every catch, every. It's just like certain shit that you don't even forget. You remember. So, so walk us through how you feel about your first NFL touchdown, that feeling. Walk us through that feeling. For one, I was surprised that he threw it to me. I, obviously, <laughs> Why would you? Because I was nah, cause I was I was young. I'm young, undrafted. Mm-hmm. So you know, and we didn't worked on this play so many times. He ain't never throw it to me. He threw it to somebody else. So when he threw it, I was surprised. Cause I kind of always ran it like I was running somebody off. Mm-hmm. And trying to get somebody else open, but I ran right past him. He threw it up. I, bo- I bobbled it and all that. But then once I came down with it, you know, it was I was definitely excited. I think I um, bent down like on the knee and then act like I was open up the safe and then let the money go and did some stuff like that and all that. So you already yeah. you already had and week. it was Monday night, so it was it, it was, was even yeah, better. That made it that yeah, much more special. Yeah, yeah. Did you already know what celebration you was gonna do if and when you scored? Did you already had it in mind? Like I know what I'm doing. I always had it in mind. It's weird. It's <laughs> weird, but I always had it in mind. It's like you know, and it's kind of weird. Like you know what games you're gonna score. You got a certain feeling. Like you know, you know what games you're gonna have good games in. But that game, you had no idea the ball was coming to you that game on, on that play. On that not on that, play. not not on that play. Because like I said, I normally normally ran it as just running somebody off and opening it up for somebody else. That makes sense. And I was young, like I said, I was young. It was my second year in the league. I'm undrafted free agent. What team? What teams you rocking with now? Like NFL teams? You got any teams? You uh, like? See, I don't got no favorite teams. I still got homeboys that play for. Pretty much every team in the league, I got a homeboy, you know, or somebody I'm cool with that play for them. Or now it's coaches that I didn't coach for. I mean, that I didn't uh, that coach, coach me. That's they crazy. go somewhere, you know. I might like the style of the coach or, you know. Like, I, once I started getting older and I started realizing about uh, players getting traded and stuff like that, I stopped really liking team, certain teams. And I just, you know, I'm just I'm just a fan of sport, but I'm a fan of all sport. Like, I really, when I'm not doing much, that's, I watch sports. And I don't just watch it like a fan watching it, though. Like, I really watch it to the T. And I'm really, like you really locked in. I mean, from, from youth football to youth basketball to AAU to high school to college to – like I really watch it. Like you got, you got to pay attention to the youth. You got to pay attention to what's up and coming. That's but true. Some people get lost. They act like they don't want to get, you know. And that's one. That's one thing about you, man. Like no matter how big you got, you never really got big headed. You always show love back to the city. You always kept it trail with your people. You just all around solid, man. You just kept it solid. That's rare, man. That's rare shit for real. Real shit. No, nah, I, mean, so I just felt like sh- for me to give back, like I didn't had about what eight toy eight toy toy drives, well eight toy drives here in Columbus, Ohio. Well, I, was I didn't. Hand, we was gonna I didn't get into that. So since you brought it up, let's, <coughs> let's talk about your foundations and the things basically that you have done or that you do plan to do for the youth as far as your foundations and organizations go. Okay. Well, I got the. The Jeff Cumberland Foundation, which is make sure you speak up just a little bit. Bro. They gotta hear this for sure. Okay. Yeah, but I got the Jeff Cumberland Foundation, which with that, uh, is a nonprofit organization, and I didn't had camps, so I didn't had uh, six football camps. I didn't had eight toy drives here in Columbus, Ohio. I didn't had like three or four in New York when I was playing and I didn't have one uh, in San Diego. So I didn't had a nice amount of uh, toy drives over the year. Um, as well with the nonprofit, um, I got some some stuff that's, that's up and coming. I really haven't talked to too many people about it, but 
kind of like a big brothers program where we teaching them about different oh, stuff oh. teach them about you know non-profit taxes and you know have different speakers come in and talk to them for different things and, you know not just sports and different things like that because you know it's a lot of kids that they don't have father figures and for kids that's in the suburbs who do have mom and dad or they you know they got their parents and they're married and they got good jobs and they working but they work so much they really ain't giving them that attention that they really need yeah. so they kind of doing their own thing kind of lost yeah they well off because they people got money but they they basically like they by themselves for in real. the same situation yeah. that's and, they, and they're trying to that's find deep. guidance in, in, in different shit so it ain't just for all the black community or you know the inner city I'm, you know, I'm for the youth, literally for the youth. Like, I feel like that's literally my calling to give back. Like, I, that's just with, with just kids in general, from my kids to whoever's kids. That's one thing. Like, I really take that shit serious with the kids. Like, I don't play no games. I love it. My, the way I was raised and the shit that I had to deal with and go through, I wouldn't wish that on no kid. Like, literally. Cause I didn't overcame some, some shit, shit, and especially at a young age. So anything that goes on now, and as an adult, it's kind of lightweight compared to what I, you know, had going as a kid. And during that time, you can't control shit. You don't got no money. You don't got no job. You don't got this. You don't got that. You the kid. Now I'm an adult, so I can control some shit. If I can't <laughs> control it, then. I'm going to let it go, but if I can control it and I don't like it, I'm going to make some changes flat out. That's excellent advice. That's excellent advice. Tell me, um, and, and, and great job with all the work that you have done with the youth too, man. I commend you. That's, that's great shit. Keep it going. Um, tell me how somebody could help or if they wanted to be a part of um, one of your organizations or help with any of the camps or giving back to the youth, how they could contact you as far as that that goes? Um, You can always reach out to me, uh, Instagram or Facebook, but more so to like when I put, uh, put information out, like I'm going, I'm gonna do a camp, but I'm not exactly sure exactly when I'm gonna do it. I'm still, you know, brainstorming and, and things like that to decide exactly when I want to do it and where. You know, I got to make sure certain fields is available, you know, all that different stuff before yeah. I just come up with a date. Yeah, so, yeah got to handle all the yeah, technical so shit. once I get all that, yeah, it'll have the all the information on my uh, social media <coughs> where you can just click it and, and see everything that's going on. So y'all heard it here from the man himself, man. Uh... I want to go back a little bit mm -hmm. since since we since we uh, represent that behave. You feel me? If anybody in the building from behave, man, comment comment oh, if you behave. from behave in the motherfucking comments, man. You know. So, the 2004 high school season, you guys won a state championship. I believe the date was December 3rd, 2004, to be exact. Um, super super big accomplishment. The first city, uh, first Columbus City school to capture a state championship. Tell me what you remember most about that specific moment in your life, because that's history. Like a lot of people could could try to sleep on that moment if they want to, but that's history. No, for sure it's history. That was what my junior year. Tell me what you remember most about that moment. About the moment. Uh, see, the it, it, the moment is. Compared to the journey, it's, it's, a, it's a difference. Because the state championship moment is just like, okay, the moment it, it the moment never really hit me. Because I kind of knew what was going to happen like early, like early on. So it was more so of, of the journey of how it happened. Like we was destroying people the whole year. Like we already kind of knew. And we was, but we was disciplined with it. That was the difference between us and any other city league team who might have had good players and things like that. We was disciplined. We was good, athletic, <coughs> fast, and we was disciplined. So, with that discipline, that just put us over the edge because we was already more talented than anybody, like, over the board, no matter our backups was better than your backups. <laughs> Literally, we, you know, we putting a little speedy in them in. 
going. They, they, going, they, they going, going. He crazy. went. He went to Colorado though, but he was the backup though. Like, and he was what, like five six. But he was he was strong though. He was benching about two eighty as a freshman, and he was you would look at him like, nah, you can't do that. He was literally like five six, probably one forty, one fifty. Mm. That was an epic season, man. I got a lot of memories. Like it was kind of long ago, but I got a lot of great memories um, about that about that school, about the the sports programs that that the behave produced. I w- I was never part of them. I actually got I went out for the basketball team because my aunt made me go out for it freshman man, year. Man, you was part of you was there. What me. you mean? Nah, they cut my ass from the basketball team <laughs> freshman year. Cause I couldn't make left-handed layups. So what? Fuck it. You feel me? But at the same note, uh, oh six year we was loaded, especially freshman year. On the year. same note, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna keep this all the way real. When you walk into basketball players and you see Drew Labs and all types of motherfuckers in there, like they they was the upper class But when you see them playing this shit, I'm like, man, I'm not about to get out here and play with these niggas for real. So I I got cut on purpose. You feel me? <laughs> I'm keep it real, cause I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to get into that, but. Tell me what do you think it was about that 2004 season that made it so special? I know you said discipline, but what else? Because it's like y'all brought all these players together from all different areas, and, like, y'all had one goal in mind to get it done. Like, what do you think it was that sparked that or what made that season so special besides the discipline? I mean, you got to think, the year before that, we was good. We only lost one game. It was 13-1 before we got any transfers or anybody. They just helped us, you know, get a little, a little over the edge. Mm-hmm. And by that next year, we, you know, Mike McGee, he was a young quarterback. What was it? A sophomore the year before. So you know, a young quarterback. Man, team just had more chemistry, and you know, guys stepped up. And then with the additional guys that we had from from Aaron Franklin, it definitely turned us up a notch. And that season was definitely a something to remember. Definitely, definitely one for the history books. Yeah, you can you can feel it even playing. Like you can feel it. Like you can feel that we was a powerhouse playing. Like you, you can tell. Like it's weird. Like no cocky shit. Cause I'm always on some humble shit. But yeah, y'all you know, had an energy in the school. Nah, like you even can, people, you even can literally like, tell. Like even us that wasn't playing, we were so excited for y'all. We was so like we felt like we was the shit just because y'all was the shit. Like oh, and we sure. went there. So. We the school. Like, you know how exactly, it goes. If your so. school sports good, <laughs> then your school is good. Listen, y'all had us turn. Y'all had us turn. Man. When Duke was winning them championships, I'm pretty sure Duke is jumping. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Fane, shout out Fane. He said, he said, tell your life, Jeff. You started from from the hood first. Oh, oh for yeah, sure. He for spoke. Sure. He definitely spoke on that. My dog definitely came from from scratch. From, 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 from the from, bottom. From, from, from the bottom, bottom. From the, Literally. From the bottom. Rats and roaches. Shit, before I turned 18, I lived in 35 different cribs. Sheesh. I ain't gonna lie. We lived in a lot, too, growing up, pretty. But 35 is a lot. That might, you might have us about, about, about five, ten to five, five to ten. Thirty-five different grades before eighteen. What do you What do you think one of the hardest parts about your childhood was, and and, and growing up in, and basically, um, because you know as as kids and as child, like when we we go through a lot of childhood trauma and shit, and then when we get older, we figure out what's wrong with us and how to deal with it how to get over it basically to, to keep moving what do you think was like one of the hardest things to actually deal with or get over as a child um, to be honest I, I kind of been like always kind of been had, well had to be like the, the strong one like even when I might feel a certain way you would never know mm-hmm. like the type never let them see you sweat type shit so I always, I always been that type. So it, it ain't never really affect me, cause you know, once I got to high school, I could see the change in my life. Like I could see the, you know, the openings. I could see the glimmer. I started traveling, playing AAU, going out of town, seeing different parts of the world. Like okay, now I ain't just stuck right here on Livingston and Oakwood, or Livingston and Twenty Second, or Gilbert, wherever I'm at, Facts. right here on, on Livingston. Facts. Well, I ain't just seeing. 
I can now I'm really seeing is it's way more out there than just right here. So and you know for me as a kid, I was able to see some certain shit different. That's why I was able to make it because. I changed certain shit. Like, yeah, like I said, when I was 12, I was on house arrest for six months. I went to jail, well, juvenile a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, 45 days, one day, one day type shit. But I done got in trouble and did did certain little shit. But once I got to high school and I had certain, I had coaches around me to kind of like guide me through just little shit. No violence, pop, wow. Yeah, pop up to my classroom. Take me home, you know. Make sure I'm, you know, make sure I'm cool type shit. Just checking up on me, just actually, cause I could, if I didn't want to go to school, I ain't have to go to school. Like shit, most people in my family dropped out at an early age, and it was shit, cause they, we want to go to school, you didn't want to go to school, shit. It was just like that. But for me, nigga, we don't got no cable, we don't got no phone. Hell no, I don't want to stay home. Nigga, what? School is your fun, man. Basically. Hell no, these roaches crawling up my legs. I'm trying to get out this bitch. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You never know, man. You never know what a motherfucker going through at the crib, too, man. Like, for I real. used to always say, like, shit, I'm going to make it. Like I said, I ain't never really do extra training with nobody for one. They wasn't really we didn't really have it back then and we didn't have no money to pay nobody for no training or no shit like that mm -hmm. but I always played sports always like always I always had a ball like I used to walk far as fuck like anybody who know from the south side I usually used to walk from Livingston and Oakwood to Schiller Recreation Center in every weather rain, sleet, snow like I'm 12 years old I used to walk to Lincoln Park, literally, for, I used to play for the Southside Seminoles. I used to walk to Lincoln Park from Oakwood and Livingston with my full equipment on, cleats and all that. Go swimming. <laughs> Straight from the swimming pool. Ashy as fuck. Chlorine and all that. Nigga, wet draws and all that. And go practice. <laughs> on every day. And go practice. Niggas be like, bro, why you got your equipment on so early? Nigga, I'm going to the pool, and I'm going to practice right afterwards. You was a, it's right here. You was a wild boy, man. You was a wild boy. What's up with my dog? What's up with my dog, Jules, man? Oh yeah, he good. He good. He just he just got engaged. So congratulations, he, hey Jules. Yeah. Shout out my dog, Jules. Congratulations, y'all holding it down, man. Y'all definitely breaking the cycle and changing up the a lot. Of, shout out to all the people breaking the cycle, the generation generational cycles and curses. Cause y'all y'all getting married, y'all doing good for yourself, y'all y'all motivating me, y'all inspiring me. This shit is lovely, man. Like these is actually people I I grew up with, and to see that the progression, like I love to see my friends doing well, living sure, their dreams sure. out. The shit is amazing, man. The shit is really amazing. It ain't easy. It ain't gonna never be easy. That's just like anything in life. Yeah, it ain't shit easy. Not anything worth having. He said, Quay said, uh, he said, man, that old four year gave me some confidence. I still carry the day. I know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I know. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some other uh, players still walking with that belt, too. So how you feel about the um, the Little League as far as the uh, Little League? Cause you know how it be like a lot of drama surrounding the little leagues and stuff. People like to do like a lot of the online social media blasting the little leagues. But from your personal perspective, from you being that you've crossed that threshold of a, a professional athlete, where do you think we are now as far as the space of the little leagues? How do you think it is right now? Um, as far as the, the the drama and the nonsense, I don't really get into that. I kind of I stay in my own lane. That's just me in general in any situation. But the Little League for Columbus um, is progressing. It's definitely progressing. You know, DJ, Dominic Jones, he went to Brookhaven with us. He was on the state Shout championship. Out DJ. Shout out my dog, DJ. You know, he got the, the Legacy U program, and he, he got it going for the kids. He definitely got it going. He got a good league going. They got it. They traveling. He, they, he doing some, some good things. So, I see the Little League. I see it going up, especially from – when I played to even a couple years ago, like, he, he, he got it set up, you know, and you can't please everybody. It's going to be people, you know, who not going to like certain stuff or, you know, I didn't hurt certain stuff. I, like I said, I mind my business, but, you know, 
I, I definitely fuck with what DJ doing. Um, we actually gonna get him on here for an interview soon. Hopefully, we can get that soon. It's definitely in the works. Um, definitely love what he doing. Like I said, with the league and everything, and I think we in a definitely a different space than where we was when we was coming up too. So I'm definitely feeling good about that as well. What do you think is What do you think is next for you? Um, being that you're retired now, do you think coaching is in the for sure future for you? Um, it's crazy because I used to always say like, nah, nah, I ain't gonna do no coaching. I ain't gonna do no coaching. But now that my my son, he only five, but he getting to that point where he just played t ball, and then he just finished his his basketball season, and then he gonna play flag football, and then I'm gonna let him play tackle football. So obviously. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there for him, and mm -hmm. I, and whatever he's doing, I'm gonna, you know, I gotta be a part of it, and I, and I gotta coach him too. I can't just be the parent to just take him every day and just sit there, especially when I got so much knowledge to give and all that. I'd be cheating. So that's why I'm asking though. Do you, do you think you'll end up trying to coach a, a specific team or getting your own team to coach one day? Uh. Yeah, I mean, I did some coaching. I coached for um, Reynoldsburg last year, Reynoldsburg High School football football team. So I, I did, I did a little bit of that, and I thought about it this year. But like I said, as far as my son's teams, I was just coaching the six six U team, my six U team. We got a banquet tomorrow, matter of fact. Yeah, my son's six U team. My son and my nephew they play on it. We had a pretty pretty decent season. But yeah, they they was out there playing football. They ready for football. What, what position your son like? He ain't even really on no positions yet. You know, I just I still kind of let them be kids. You know, I still do a little training and certain stuff with them. But I I let them be kids. Shit, I take them everywhere. I just brought them back from Disney World. Shit, my son's birthday. He went to Myrtle Beach. My my daughter, she about to turn seven um, in April, April fifth, and then. We asked her what she wanted to do for her birthday. She talking about she want to go to China. <laughs> Your daughter? Yeah, That's talking dope. about she want to go to China. And then, my, and then my oldest daughter, like, uh, Lola, yes, daddy has money to go to China, but I think you're overdoing it. I don't think he's taking you to China. <laughs> I was cracking up. I think that's a, I think that's an even, even doper response, too, for her to even be like that. Um, the fact that you, like I said, completely – completely changed up the program and like I said you got your kids doing stuff that you didn't even do when you was what double the age oh yeah for sure like I didn't even start playing sports on a team until I was nine my son five he already he already playing he already didn't start it so he got away earlier than me in my first year when I played football for my Raiders I was shitty my, I remember that, shitty, shitty. Well, that was shitty <laughs> <laughs> literally I think I got in one game but that next year I came back I was popping everything and from there I just knew like I had it and since then I was always kind of like that one and I never really realized it as much until like older and then I started thinking back like damn I was I was I was really doing that shit like that but during the time I was never you know too cocky or like Nigga, I'm the shit. Like, I was never like that. I was always kind of quiet and shy, for real, for real. Just cool, man. Tell me this. Kind of a weird question. I ain't gonna say weird question. No question is... Almost no question is weird. But different question. If you could be a superhero, what would your superhero name be? And what superhero power would you possess? See, I ain't never really been in a, like, superheroes and shit like that. It's just hypothetically speaking. Yeah. I think I need another joint. I ain't high enough. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I ain't high enough for those questions, nigga. He a said, super you, hero. you don't want the space with it. She is super dad or no, none of the, uh, nah, not in the, none of the shows I done seen. Nah. He said, super dad. Yeah, some shit like that. That's all I care about as far as motherfuckers actually caring. Like, I used to be worried about what people thought, what people thought about me and shit like that. Now I don't give a fuck. As long as my kids, they 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 enjoying it, they like it. 
That's all that matters. As long as they like, like it, no, you love it. I'm literally like that, though. You ask motherfuckers who close to me, like, nigga, I literally, nigga, I don't give a fuck. Like, Things happen. Temperature, it has a, a function on it. When the temperature gets too hot, it automatically turns itself off. So we back rolling. Um, my dog Jay's kids is blowing him up. They ready to get, they need their pops, you feel me? My dog is already saying, you feel me? He a family man. Y'all know I ain't holding that down. But, um... Before you get out of here, I wanted you to just give us a give us a message for the youth, man. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of kids out there going through their own trials and tribulations and going through things that probably you don't feel they have the confidence or the guidance or the strength to make it to the point that you've made it to. I want to know what it is that you could tell the youth to help inspire them, um, guide them, and help push them to the next level. Some words of inspiration from Jeff Cumberland. Mm. Some words of encouragement. Mm-hmm. Advice, you, inspiration, encouragement, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, I would just say stay dedicated, stay disciplined, and be coachable. You know, you got to be coachable. That's like one of the number one things. Like, you can be the greatest athlete but if you ain't coachable, which some people who, if they don't know what coachable is, is, you know, somebody who listening and, and, you know, doing what they put supposed to be doing, doing what the coaches are asking you to do. Your coach, your teacher, or your parent ain't going to never ask you to do nothing that they know that you physically can't do. Anything they're asking you to do, they know you can do it. So, and once you learn, you, you push yourself a little bit, you start learning more about yourself, and you and you really building on yourself because you're never done growing. You can you could be 65 and still grow. Ain't that the truth? You never know too much. Ain't that the it's, truth? It's still, a, it's still a lot of shit that I, you know. I'm I still know. learning daily. And I done been, <laughs> I done been all around the world in so many places and seen so many things and you know accomplished and overcame some things but yeah just stay disciplined and stay looking looking up stay looking up looking forward push forward you know and it's okay you know to be mad sad all those different type of things but it's, it's certain ways that you handle it like just cause you sad you don't gotta you don't gotta cry every time you sad Every time you mad, you don't got to slam the door or cut somebody out or punch the wall or get into a fight or even have a drink that where you know it's going to turn you up some more. You know, different little stuff. Like, you know, just knowing how to control yourself, control your attitude, discipline, and how to get you far. I love it. I love it. Um, if, if ain't nobody told you, I'm going to tell you here and now, you a legend. You're a Columbus City legend, bro. And you're a legend in the world, but I'm talking about from Columbus. You're a legend. You for feel sure, me? You've, sure. done, you've done and accomplished things that a lot of people will never accomplish, bro. Like, let's just, there's no way to sugarcoat it, bro. Um, you, you, you changed your, you, you created your legacy. You changed your circumstances for your family and those around you close to oh, you, definitely. man. And... And you a stand-up dude, bro. And I just want to commend you. I want to give you your flowers now, here, and today. And I want you to know that your your hard work, your all the all the work that you put in, all the history that you put in, all the time that you put in, the ten thousand hours plus that you put in does not go unnoticed, bro. And I definitely salute. I respect you. Um, you a big inspiration to the city, and just just keep going, bro. Keep doing everything that you're doing, bro. Like it's it's crazy. Like going to actually going to high school with you. And watching you accomplish these things and actually knowing you is a little different. Because I don't know. I can't say I know a lot of sports players right, right, or right, people right. that was in the NFL. You feel me? So it's a it's a, it's an honor. It's a blessing. Um, I appreciate you for taking the time away from your kids and your family to come through and chat with us. Um, is it let people know where they can follow you at? Because I know they want to see you post that drip and them good ass plates that you be posting. Let the people know where they can follow you at, find you if they want to contact you regarding any business inquiries. Um, just uh, my Instagram is Jeff dot Um, I don't do Twitter or nothing. Pretty much Instagram is pretty much the only 
social media I do. I mean, I do have a Facebook. I got a couple of Facebooks. Um, and that's the same thing, just my name, Jeff Cumberland. You can reach me on there, you know. Me and my kids, we got a um, YouTube coming up as well. What's the name? You already got the channel started? With the Cumberland Crew. Yeah, I just. Is that just, the name just, of the channel? Just, yeah. Subscribe to the Cumberland Crew right now. Turn my dog up. How many yeah. subs y'all got right now? Uh, I don't know. I ain't even. I'm literally just now, you know, getting it set up and all that. I don't know how many y'all got right now, but I'm telling you, that motherfucker going up. It's going yeah. up. That's the per. I'm glad you did it. I'm so glad you started that. I, I give it. I give it five months to a year, and that motherfucker going up. That motherfucker gonna really be up. Oh no, for here. sure. I mean, I didn't had a chance. Like uh, to do a TV show with the kids, but it happened to be at the wrong time. Literally, they wanted it to be like when I was playing for the Jets in New York, New Jersey. They wanted the family to be out there, and I had just went to the Chargers. Literally, I just went to the Chargers, so I know. I mean, it it can come, or I can you know I can do it my own self at the same time. My, but my kids, they definitely they exciting. They uh -huh. they, they they something to see. It's going to be turnt, man. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Make sure you are subscribed to the Cum uh, Cumberland Crew. Um, again, I appreciate my dog, Jeff, for stopping through on us. This is the Penthouse Podcast, episode 20. I'm your host, Bangy. And other than that, man, I ain't got nothing else to say, man. We out this bitch, man.